Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to show you how to build this router table that's mobile, has tons of storage, and it's just flat out awesome. Let me show you how I did it. First thing you want to do is cut out the top that you're going to be using because you're going to glue two pieces of MDF together. You want this glue to have time to dry. I use a ton of this glue and I'm using Type Bond 3 for this. I decided to put down some paper to protect the workbench because I figured it would drip off the sides like that. I coated the entire surface then laid the other piece up there. Then I weighted it down with my weights or whatever you got. Just put a lot of weight on there so that it compresses everything together. You see, I got a lot of glue squeezed out here and it's exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna let that dry for several hours. The build plans for this project, including all the cut lists, easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions, linked in the description below. Next thing we do is take my circular saw with this awesome little fence square that Tay Tools sells. I'll drop a link in the description. You're able to use your framing square just to cut a straight line. And that's what I did breaking down this plywood into smaller pieces so I could get it on the table saw. Once I got the plywood into manageable sizes, I cut all the pieces I was going to need for the cabinet. Then I realized that I was out of space here. I couldn't fit between the plywood and the garage door, so I moved the saw around to give me some more space. And that's why I love that mold base on that saw. I was able to finish the cuts on that side of the table. Then I broke out my Masca M2 pocket hole jig. It's pocket hole time. Make sure to set that bit for three quarter inch stock. Set the Masca M2 jig at three quarters of an inch and drill pocket holes. Pocket hole joiner is extremely strong, especially for cabinet work like this. It'll work perfect and it'll last a very long time. Then I sand it to 120 grit just to knock the rough edges off everything. Now it's time to start assembling the frame. Just put a little glue on each edge where it's gonna be assembled. It'll sit right there, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, yeah. Oh! I use these clamps to help hold everything in place while I was able to drive the pocket screws. And I'm using an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws here. This is the bottom that you're seeing here. I'm just using the mallet to flush everything up, makes everything is nice and flush. Tighten those clamps down, then you can drive the screws without anything moving on you. Once that done, I started working on the top. These are just braces that's gonna go on each edge of the top. That way it leaves the center open for your router lift. Next, I inserted the center shelf and I used my uprights that will be used later as spacers. Same thing here, just a little bit of glue, slide it into place, use pocket hole screws to attach it. Up. Then I unboxed this Bosch router so I could make sure everything was going to fit correctly. I'll drop a link to this router and all the tools and supplies used in this build in the description below. Next thing I did was cut the back out of quarter inch plywood. I cut it to fit. Then I just used glue on everywhere it was gonna to be touching the back. Set it in place, and then I used 18 gauge brad nails to nail it in place. This gives the cabinet a lot of strength. And then I decided to put a center divider in on the bottom because I didn't want two large drawers on the bottom. I wanted four equal sides, so that's what I did. Next, started cutting out the drawer pieces and you just cut a lot of plywood here because you're gonna need a lot of drawer pieces.
Everybody always asks how I keep my shop so clean. Well, it's regularly cleaning it. And I'm always vacuuming up the dust as I go. Then I cut the drawer pieces to length. I have a detailed video on how to build drawers linked in the description below. But here I'm gonna be setting my cut depth at a quarter of an inch and then also a quarter inch away from the saw blade. Then I'll make these dados in there, move the fence over, make another dado until that quarter inch plywood fits in the bottom. Now I'm just using quarter inch plywood for the bottom of the drawers and I sand everything to 120 grit. These are the slide out trays. I'm just using glue and brad nails to attach them. The glue will be plenty strong for these trays. And for each end of the tray, I use these little pieces with 30 degree dog ears on. And I have one that didn't go all the way in, so I had to hammer it in. Now it's time to assemble all the drawers. So I've got about six hours in this build so far. This is how far I was able to get. I got four drawers built and I got the carcass built. And then I just use the planer to mill these down to the same thickness. Then I set my table saw fence the exact distance away from the blade as a piece of the plywood. That way when I cut this piece, it'll be the exact thickness of the plywood. We can put that on the plywood edge. I just use glue and pin nails here. So having a pin nailer like this is perfect for this situation because you can barely see those pin nails. And if I don't show them to you, you'd never see them. That just holds everything in place while the glue dries. I use face clamps to hold everything flush while I pin nailed it into place. Then I just sanded everything to 120 grit. After sanding, I got this little handy dandy dude here. It accepts any hook and loop five inch disc. It fits perfectly on there. Then I just hand sanded everything to 120 grit. I'm gonna approach it a little different this time. On the workbench, I use some Craig drawer slide jigs. They work perfectly fine, I like them. But I see a lot of people doing this uh, spacer method. And I'm going with that, I think it'll be faster. This video is brought to you by 731moveworks.com. Go check out our online store where we have full build plans for this project that includes the cut list and easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions on how to build it. Also available are the digital files for these insert trays if you have a CNC. And if you don't have a CNC, I'll have these physical trays available for you to purchase that'll fit inside this router table. On the top two slide out trays, I put the drawer slides on the same side. That way I would just have a tray with an open face towards me, like that. Come on. That's heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Next I installed the casters, I just cut a block of plywood and then glue and brad nailed it in place. And then I screwed the casters into that block. I put the two locking casters on the front. Then I use this old trick with the painter's tape to keep the plywood face from splintering, but this is gonna be the drawer faces. Then I just cut the drawer faces to size with the miter saw and then ripped them to the width on the table saw. Now it's time to work on the top. So I unstacked all these weights, 
and then I started cutting it down to size. I want my tabletop to be 24 by 36 inches after the edge banding's on. And disaster strikes in three, two, one. Oh no! Mm. Cut it too narrow! Adapt and overcome, people. Yep. Next, I secured the top on with screws from underneath. And then I worked on the edge banding around the top. Now, again, I'm just using walnut. This is three quarter inch stock. And I just attach with glue and bread nail. So in my haste to put this thing together, I actually cut this too narrow and I don't want to have to glue it back up on another piece. So what I did was just rip this to the same thickness as that. And then we're gonna put, I was gonna put this on the back anyway, uh, but it's just not gonna have as much overhang. The plans will not have this, so you ain't gotta worry about that. I'm a big dummy and messed it up. So there we have it. I gave everything a light sand. Now for the power switch, I got this on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. I went ahead and mounted a block of walnut so I could have a place to screw this to. I'll deal with the wires later. So the most challenging part and what I was most apprehensive about was actually mounting this plate. And I just centered it up, drew around it. I took a Forstner bit and made some starter holes. And then I used the jigsaw to cut it out the inside. Be careful that you leave enough space. You're gonna route a recess on the outer edges so that the router plate has somewhere to sit. I'm just making sure that it fits. I measure over an inch and three quarters because that's the distance from my bit until the edge of my router. Use double stick tape and kind of made me a, a template. Then I use the router lift itself to set the depth of the bit. Then slow goes it. I use a block of wood to keep me from going too far so that I didn't get too close to that edge because I wanted to make sure and get that radius just right. I just took my time here. This actually took quite a bit of time and I just kept routing and routing and routing until I got most of the material gone. Then I found a Forstner bit that was the exact radius of my router lift. And so the piece that was left, I took the Forstner bit and drilled down until I got to the same depth as the, what the router had routed out. Then I took a chisel and straightened everything up as well as the sandpaper. This took quite a while because I just kind of worked my way till it actually fit. Next thing to do was route the grooves for the T-Track. I used my Craig setup blocks here, set the depth at 3 8 of an inch, and then also use some sacrificial blocks on each side so that it doesn't tear out your wood because if you don't, you'll get tear out. That's what that block is there for, just like that. Once that was done, I made sure everything was going to fit, and then I cleaned up all the routing dust. Use a 1 8 inch round over bit just to kind of knock the edge off of everything on the top. Then I used shellac on the top. This is supposed to seal this MDF, and it actually worked extremely well. I put three coats of shellac, and I sanded 120 grit between each coat. This dries really fast less than an hour and the, each coat is dry. I actually put shellac on everything, although I would live to regret this. So full disclosure, I put on that amber colored shellac and while it worked phenomenal up here on the top, it sealed it, it's slick as owl snot. You hear me, it's just whack. The color come out amber. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate the way this looks. This looks like it belongs in 1980 something. So I'm gonna sand this back off as much as I can without trying to get into the veneer and try to take away some of that ugly.
after the final coat was dry and sanded, I used a coat of Odie's oil to really slick this thing up. Then I buffed it off with a clean rag. Cut the teeth rack with your miter saw. It's aluminum, it'll cut. I don't like it, but you can do it. And then I just took a sander and kind of rounded over the edges so that I didn't cut myself on the end. I used a little CA glue and screws to attach it to the table. Then I mounted my drawer pulls and inserted all the drawers and mounted the door. Then I mounted the router into the lift, put it in place, and used a little Outlaw English to make sure it's set just right. Then I routed those cables with some cable ties. Drill a hole in the back for the power to come through. I got help. Help us here. Power on. I got this fence from TayTools.com. I think it runs about $100. I'll drop a link in the description. It's actually a really good fence for the money. You can actually have offset fence on each side. It's got a bit guard, dust collection, the whole nine. Next, it was time to organize the routers and everything into the router table. So I just used a Forstner bit and drilled the hole, then stuck a rare earth magnet in there with CA glue. So now my adjustment wrench has a place to be vertical, out of the way, and it's quick and easy access. I've been very apprehensive about starting this project because I was nervous and fear was stopping me from starting. And that's a big problem with a lot of people, myself included. But once I started, I just figured it out as I went and it come out fantastic. And I'm extremely proud and happy to have this in the shop now. So a couple of things that I would change if I had to do this again. Number one would be the shellac. While it sealed the MDF, great. And this thing is, it's slick as owl snot. It is smooth, it doesn't catch. That's what I was worried about with the MDF, that it would be kind of rough, stuff wouldn't slide on it. I'm telling you, it is slick. Now I did sand it to 800 grit sandpaper so I could get it really smooth. I would try to probably figure out a better way to cut this insert out so that it fits extremely perfect. It's really close, really close, but it's not perfect fit. Without a proper template, it would be hard for me to get it perfect. So I'm happy with it. It'll fill up with sawdust and be just fine. I'm gonna add a four inch dust port on the back when my dust collection gets here. Until then, I'm just gonna cut a two inch hole so that the, or two and a quarter, so the shop back can fit in there. And a quick reminder, we've got build plans available for this project if you're interested, as well as several other projects on the online store, 731bullbarks.com slash store. And those organization trades, which makes this a fantastic router table, will be available for you either as a digital file or a physical product if you want to buy them and put them in your router table if you build this one. A huge shout out and thank you to Mr. Mark Puente, who owns Working the Grain Hardwoods, where I buy all my hardwood from. He donated the Craig Precision router lift, as well as the Bosch router to go inside this cabinet for me to build this router table for the channel. So thank you, Mark. I sanded everything but the back. It's still got that 1980s yellow to match the top. If you like this video, click that box right there to check out this ultimate workbench build. It has a YouTube silver plate button embedded in epoxy. I think you'll like it. It has a lot of storage, T-tracks. It's just an awesome workbench I use all the time. If you click that box, you get that big old virtual fist bump. Also another one of my favorite videos right there.